Hello everyone, today we're going to be focusing on how to get a basic static mesh into the game. We're going to be importing the mesh, importing some textures, creating a material, and then once we've got the material in, we're also going to focus on how to set up some vertex painting. So as you can see here, I have this old and busted barrel, but at the same time, I can paint straight into it in-game and make it look nice and shiny and new. Hopefully you get a little bit from it, and uh, we'll start off now. Enjoy! So the first thing I'm going to need everyone to do is to just open up the folder with whatever textures it is that you've got. And we're going to get the FBX, we're going to get the two target files, both target, uh, the underscore D and two underscore D, as well as the normal map. Now one thing I just want to bring up before we continue is that I've actually included a rough specular map inside of the textures of the, uh, the targets. So the actual, the alpha channel makes up the specular map. Anyway, click on these, drag, and import. At which point we get this popping up. So in this situation, I'm going to say, yes, it's static mesh, import normals and tangents. I click import. In this case, the file version isn't quite right, but that's okay. Now, if I look at it, we've now got a mesh. We've now got uh, diffuse as a clean texture, diffuse as an old and busted texture. One thing to point out as well is that this could theoretically be done programmatically, but for the sake of demonstration, I've just made two textures. And then finally, we have a normal map texture. And as you can see under the phrase uh, compression settings, it actually has already created it as a normal map, which is one thing that UE3 didn't do. So it's kind of nice. Now, with this in play, what we're going to go about doing is we're going to right click, we're going to create a new material, and I'm going to call this M underscore barrel shader. I'm going to call barrel shader 2 just so I can keep it right in my head because I've already created a barrel shader uh, to test this beforehand. So here we now have barrel shader 2 as a material. What I want you to do is just double click that to open it. As you can see, we've now got this back here. So before we continue, what I want you to do is just click on the uh, the greatest barrel ever underscore D, so the rusted texture. Click on that, hold down T and click in your material editor to add it as a texture sample. Go back in here, click on the normal map, hold down T, click in here. We've now got our normal map and our, um, a diffuse texture already imported. One other thing I'm actually going to do here, because I think it's pretty important, is I'm going to bring in the mesh as a preview mesh. So if you see this here, the moment it's previewing it as a sphere, but we really want it to be this barrel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the barrel and in the material, I'm going to click on this little teapot icon. That now imports it as a preview mesh. So you can see that now I've got my barrel in here as the preview demonstration. So, once that's done, all we need to do is to begin just to, to actually see what's going on. I'm going to click here and connect that to base color. I'm going to click here and drag it to normal. We now have a normal map working off of a barrel. Ta -da. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to set up the specular. So in this case, I'm going to get the alpha channel, which is this bottom channel. And I'm going to drag that into specular which gives it a slightly more realistic shine. Now with that done, the next thing I'm going to actually focus on is in getting the metallic property uh, correct. So this metallic property is done by just holding down one, or you can click over here and type in constant. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to hold down one, click, and I'm going to drag and connect this to metallic. Now what this does is this just gives us a single variable that can feed into the metallic property. And if you look at this uh, in the viewport, it might be a little bit tricky to see in the tutorial, but if you look at it, watch what happens when I set metallic all the way up to 1. You'll notice that it got substantially shinier and substantially more metallic. Now in this case, I never want it to look that shiny as I feel like that's kind of excessive. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change this value to probably about 0.8 get a little bit tinny but not too much and yeah that's about right the next thing I want to do is uh, set up the roughness value and tell it how rough the surface is so to do that I'm going to get this uh, now again I could drag in a constant or I could drag in a one in this case I can hit control W as well to duplicate so I'm going to get that and now I'm going to connect this to the roughness value so this is heading up to here 
And I think for a roughness value, I'm probably going to push it. You know what? Actually, 0 0.8 worked reasonably well. I'm inclined to go up to 0 0.9. Because this is an old and busted barrel. You know, we don't want it looking too shiny for this version of it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So I'm going to save that out. And now if I was to look at that uh, in the actual engine itself, I would be able to see that if I was to get this barrel, I can double click it to open it. Sorry, my thing defaults to opening it in the other window. Uh, I'm going to click Barrel Shader 2, which is the material we've just created. I'm going to click on this little arrow here to now apply it. So now every instance of this barrel that I drag into the world is going to have that. So if I want to see what that looks like, at the moment I've still got my old barrels on screen. They're we're there for the demonstration, I'm just going to delete them. Uh, what I'm going to do here is if I get this barrel, I can now drag it in, and you can see that we have ourselves a very simple, basic prop. So, believe it or not, that's actually the end of this part of the tutorial. The next section is going to be focusing on how to set up vertex painting, so stick around, and I hope you enjoy it.